I don't think that's any different to building trust with anybody actually, in, uh, outside of a, a, a business context too. So um, I don't think you trust anybody who lets you down. So you've got to do what you say you're going to do. Uh, and to begin with, at the beginning of a relationship, that's probably like to be a small, small thing. It might be, a, you know, I'll get back to you tomorrow. If you don't, you're not going to be trusted with the big things. So I think you've got to be reliable. Um, you trust people's professional competence if, uh, and their advice if you think they know more about the subject than you. So I think that requires you to be expert, very, very well prepared and on top of your subject. Um, if you bluff it, if you're a generalist, I think it's difficult to expect people to trust your advice. Um, they're going to come to you if they trust your competence. The final thing I would say, everything should come in threes, shouldn't it? Um, empathy, probably. I, I think if, if you can get a connection with somebody, whether it's through a shared experience, interest, pain, whatever it may be, that creates a connection uh, that makes it easier for people to trust you. And I think a part of that also is um, demonstrating you can see any situation from the other person's point of view. If they feel there's a divergent set of interests, they're less likely to, to trust you. So I think you need to prove you can put yourself in the seat of the other person and, and be empathetic. So I think those three would be a good start. Very interesting subject because everybody's sort of wrestling with, um, I, and I think it's as much the pace of change as, 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 as the new technology that's enabling that. And of course it's pretty critical to the assessments that we're making too. I think uh, the pace of change is simply too quick for one person to be able to understand all of its ramifications. So you've got to be a leader who's very comfortable building a good team and having a team you can trust and you'll engage with and you'll empower because the idea that one person will be the fount of all knowledge and be able to flex quickly enough with these winds of change I, I think is flawed. So a, a leader who works for a team I think is pretty critical. Um, if old style leadership tend to respect you know oak trees, you know powerful, strong, rigid leadership, whatever happens, stand firm, keep true. I, I, I think the modern world requires much, much more flexibility. Um, you know, more willows than, than oaks, if you like, um, because the winds of change are so strong, uh, an oak tree can crack. Um, and the final thing, I think, is, particularly for established businesses, if they're not to be undone by the disruptor, the great advantage, established businesses have a disadvantage, that they've got a lot of infrastructure, sunk cost systems, so it's, it, change can be more expensive and difficult. But what they should have is a very strong understanding of their client. And that I think is the most important thing. So you can spot the difference between fad, clever technology that sounds great, uh, but nobody's prepared to pay for. You know, it's, it's applying technology in a way that people value. So the knowledge of your client is the most important thing. That is more important than AI knowledge, technical knowledge, because you can use those things to deliver on behalf of your client. So really strong client centricity. I mean, I was struck, I can't remember where it was, I saw some toaster uh, that had a radio uh, attached to it. I thought, well, you know, that's a com complete misuse of technology. Why isn't it that anybody's created a toaster that can't, burn, that can't burn toast? I miss, I miss Freshers Week because I was on, on a honeymoon, that was quite memorable. But no, I think the bit that I enjoyed most was the economics. It was particularly well taught when I was there. And, you know, it moved into the sort of areas of game theory and behavioural economics too. And I think economics really is the, the science, the physics behind business. Uh, and that gave pause to reflect and some really simple old economic truths that still hold true and people so often forget. Um, so I found the economics subjects 
absolutely fascinating. Um, and still, still fall back on quite a lot of that. Well, I mean, it's, it's a great honour, it's sort of humbling. Um, I think the thing it strikes, the, the chord it struck with me is actually how lucky I am. You know, uh, lucky to have been presented with the opportunities that I have been that have led to, to being here. Lucky to work with the people I work with that have, you know, helped us do what we do. So I think, um, lucky, I'm lucky.